cherishing today because this is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for joining me today as we sew the honeycomb cover. This pattern is very special to me. It was originally designed to hold and carry the Word of God. God's words are precious, and a cover needed to meet certain criteria. The honeycomb cover checks all the boxes. It is a beginner-friendly sewing pattern that has a wraparound zipper without having to sew around curves. It includes a carry handle with connectors to attach a strap, two pockets, a pin loop, and lays flat when open. But the possibilities don't stop there. It includes the paper pattern piece templates for three size options and an easy to follow worksheet that walks you through how to customize the pattern to fit your project. But did I mention it also comes with a custom size calculator? It's an Excel document file that allows you to enter the book dimensions and it will automatically calculate the dimensions for your pattern template. With the ability to customize the sizing, there is a new freedom in how you can use the honeycomb cover. With a little imagination, it can easily transform from a cover for your Bible to any other book, binder, planner, notebook, or tablet. Page four of your tutorial explains how to determine which size cover to use. For the best fit, it is important to determine which size will work best for your application. If the provided sizes do not accommodate your desired specifications, you can use the Determining Sizes Worksheet. Or, even better, you can use the Custom Calculator. At the bottom of the same page are a few diagrams to help you understand the terminology used throughout the tutorial. The main things you need to remember is these little portions sticking up from the top and bottom on the left and right sides are called the arms slash gussets. The portion in the middle, the area in the middle between the two 90 degree angles of the arm gussets is called the center portion. When you're looking at the exterior right side up, the back of the cover will be to your left and the front of the cover will be to your right. When you're looking at the interior right side up, your left pocket will have the pen loop and that will be your front pocket and your right pocket will be to the back. Page five is our cut chart. It includes all three sizes, and all three sizes require the same pin loop, rivets, and connectors. Here are the supplies you need in order to complete a honeycomb cover. You need zipper tape and a zipper pull. Two D-rings, or you can use triangle rings. You need one inch webbing, you'll need three ribbons. You need a piece of elastic for your pen loop, eight rivets, and then your choice of some type of tag if you want to use one. You'll need a spine and spine interfacing. You'll need two pockets, your main exterior and your main lining. Let's begin with the spine. In the actual pattern file, it tells you that if you want to use a raw edge, that you remove one inch from the actual spine pattern piece. That one inch is actually marked on the pattern piece with a dashed line. Because this is going to be a folded 
edged. What we first do is we're going to take and mark the centers on the top and bottom edges. So I like to take it, fold it in half, and very lightly snip the corner. Repeat that on the opposite side. With the spine wrong side up, we're gonna measure and mark a line from each long edge. Now we're going to fix double-sided tape or DST along each of the long edges on the wrong side of the spine. Take off the backing and fold the edge over to meet that line. Stick it down. If you're using a raw edge spine, you don't need to do this portion. If you're worried about them not holding in place, you can place clips just along the edges enough to make sure that it stays affixed. We also need to mark the centers of our spine stabilizer or interfacing. Now we're gonna mark the centers of our exterior piece. Match up your 90 degree angles, bring it to the fold, and just make a tiny snip. Do that also for the bottom. And then you're gonna lay it wrong side the tutorial instructs you to measure down from the top edge and make a mark. I'm just going to leave my ruler in place and we're going to go from there. Then you're going to take your spine interfacing and you're going to line it up with the center mark and the mark you just made. You're going to bring it down and make sure it's lined up with the center mark in the bottom. And there you go. The next step is to attach your DST a little bit away from the long edge to avoid being in, in the seam allowance. I like to use this line of the folded edge here, but if you didn't fold your edges, you won't have that line as a luxury to see. So just a little ways away from the edge and then affix your DST um, you don't have to use DST. You can use masking tape or anything to hold it in place whenever you affix it to the exterior. I just find it so much easier to use double-sided tape. All right. All right, now you're going to position your exterior right side up. And you want to make sure that the line that you drew at the top is at the top. You're going to take off the backing from your double-sided tape. And then you're going to line it up along the top edge with your center point. Top edge and center point should meet up. And along the bottom, you're gonna have an overhang. I like to turn it over and make sure that the, it's still centered with the top and bottom. 
and then make sure it sticks to your double-sided tape. As you can see, it's lined up with the top edge and it overhangs the bottom edge. Okay, now we're going to go and make a top stitch. So make sure you set it to your top stitch length. One eighth inch from this folded edge. After that, we're gonna skip over an eighth inch away from that and we're making a double row of top stitching along this edge. Then we're gonna take and we're gonna start on the other side and do the exact same thing. So let's get started. Again, skip over just an eighth inch. Make another row. And the second row on this side. You'll need your exterior piece that you just affixed the spine to, your strap guide, a chalk pencil, and a ruler. From the top edge, you're going to measure and then you're going to line up your strap guide. This strap guide works for your cover and for your webbing. So when you're marking your holes, you only mark the first two do not mark the bottom one because that is for the webbing to fold underneath itself. So that's all you use is the first two rows of holes. Then you're gonna go from the bottom, lining it up with the bottom edge of the spine, which is an inch further down. And you're going to line up centered your strap guide. And again, just the first two roll, rows of holes. And it doesn't matter whether you do it from the bottom or from the top. The distance between the end of the strap guide and the first set of holes is the same, whether it's the bottom or the top. Using an erasable marker, You'll need your strap guide and your webbing. Align your strap guide with the end of your webbing. Make sure you can see all your holes and then mark all of the holes, all three rows. And then repeat that on the opposite side. Now we're gonna punch the holes. I like to take a lighter and singe both sides of the holes after I finish. Make sure you can see through all of them. Let's go ahead and do this one again. There we go. Now I'm gonna get a lighter 
and I'm going to singe all the holes. All right. And now we're going to do our spine. go. All right, let's begin. We're going to take and we're going to put our rivets through the holes. Find it easier just to go ahead and put the posts through so you can see what you're working with on this side. Then you're going to start with your inner hole. You're going to put First two row in, put your caps on. Then you're gonna take your ring, you're gonna put it in. Then you're gonna fold over the end and stick the post through both holes. And then Put your cap on. And the D ring is locked between the two rows of rivets. Then you'll just repeat that on your opposite side. Now it's time to set the rivets. It doesn't matter which way you go for this because they're already all in place. So just put them where they go and make sure it's in the right spot. I'm gonna get that one. All of that side's done. Let's do the other side. If utilizing a custom logo, now is the time to add that. And then we set this piece aside. Now we're going to start by preparing our interior. We're going to begin by marking the center points. Now we're going to turn it so that it's wrong side up. And we're going to be working on the left hand side where the top left arm gusset meets the center portion. We're going to measure down and make our mark. Then we're going to measure over and make our next mark. Then we're going to come to the bottom. We're going to measure up, make our mark, and then measure over and make our next mark. Then we're going to take our ruler and we're going to line it up from one edge 190 degree angle here over to the furthest left mark. We're going to come up to the other one and then we'll go over back up to the 90 degree angle. Then we're going to go and we're going to cut along this line that we just drew. 
I like to start by using my scissors to snip into the little dot. Then all I have to do is cut up a straight line with my rotary cutter. Make sure you don't cut your arms at all. And don't cut further than you need to cut. So if you have to use your scissors to snip, it's better to do that. All right, now we should have our separate arm gusset and our center portion with our attached arm gusset. Now we need to mark the center points. So we're gonna take and we're gonna fold the arm in half. And we're gonna cut a little notch. And then we're gonna take and we're going to fold the center portion in half. And we're going to cut a little notch. Okay. Before we set this aside, we're going to grab one of our pocket pieces. Your pocket piece should be the same height as your center portion. So this is how you know which way that you're going to fold your pocket. So let's set these aside. We know that on the children's size, the long straight edge is going to be the pocket side that you fold. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our ruler for this pocket and we're going to measure and we're going to mark. We want it on the wrong side of the pocket and we're gonna take our pocket and we're going to fold it into this line. Now I pre-creased mine to make it easier during the video. I'm going to take some clips and we're going to clip it together, making sure to keep it at the line that we drew. And then we're going to put clips along the top. We're gonna take it to the sewing machine and we're gonna top stitch along the folded edge. Be sure to set it to your top stitch length. Now we're going to take, we're going to fold this in half so that we can find the center point of the pocket. Now I don't want to cut this, so I just move that out of the way and just barely snip this. Okay, so we just made a snip in the center of the pocket. Now that the pocket's sewn along the fold, we're gonna take our arm gusset, right sides together with the pocket, line up the center point that we made, and line it up along the line that you drew here. Then you're going to clip it together in place. Make sure it's all lined up because it's only an eighth inch seam allowance from that point. Okay. We're going to start and stop 3 8 inch from each edge of the pocket. So it should be right about where the dot is and you're going to start and stop on each edge. And then you're only going to do a 1 8 inch seam allowance. This is not a top stitch 
It's a regular stitch, but it's only a 1 8 inch seam allowance. So let's take it to the machine. All right, set the other pocket aside. We're going to take our pen loop and a clip and just fold it together, wrong sides together, and clip it. We're gonna take our other pocket and we're going to make a mark on the right side of the fabric. And then we're going to line up this with that mark and clip it on. If you plan to use a custom logo tag on the outside edge seam of the pocket, then you're going to put the tag in and also clip it in place. Then you'll take the other side of the pocket you will fold it together and clip them together. All right, now we'll take this to the machine and we'll sew across the raw edge, just a regular stitch. When you get to the elastic, just hold on to it with your finger right here where you can feel it inside. I like to also back stitch over it just to make sure it's good and secure. Same with the tag, just hold on to it over here. And I'm gonna back stitch. Okay, now that we've sewn this edge, to reduce bulk, we clip, just clip off the edge there at an angle. Okay, let's turn this thing right side out. It's like turning a tube or a sleeve. Right here where the tag sticks out, let's put a clip. We want that seam straight. Let's go up here for the pen loop. For best result, it's a good idea to use an iron. And we're gonna take it to the machine and we're gonna top stitch along this single folded edge. Not the seam edge, the single folded edge. Remember this is a top stitch. I'm gonna do it at a 1 8 inch seam allowance. <laughs> Now that we top stitched along the folded edge, we can put this pocket aside. Now we're going to grab our interior lining and lay it right side up. I'm going to take our ruler. And we're going to measure from this 90 degree angle where the arm meets the center portion. And we're going to make a mark. And then we're going to do the same thing for the bottom. Take the pocket piece that has the pencil loop and the tag. Make sure your seam is straight and align it with this bottom mark and the center portion and clip it in place.
Do the same thing for the top. And then we're gonna use our longer clips to clip along the edge. We just got this clipped. Now we're going to make a mark from the top edge. And we're gonna make a mark from the bottom edge. Now we're gonna take this to machine and we're gonna sew with a 1 8 inch seam allowance from this mark to this mark. Let's take it to the machine. Start at that mark with a 1 8 inch seam allowance. You're going to want to back stitch well. And then this is going to be a top stitch. And just follow along with a 1 8 inch seam allowance. All right, and remember to stop at your mark and back stitch well. Now we're going to continue sewing this pocket. We're going to base down the sides, but we're going to start at the 90 degree angle with a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Now we're just sewing this down. I do recommend to back stitch well. So forward and backward, start and stop at the 90 degree angle. Go off the edge of the pocket and then back on to back stitch it. Now repeat for the other side. And remember, start and stop, 90 degree angle and just after the edge of the pocket. Okay, we just sewed this pocket into place along this edge with our seam allowance open right here, leaving the quarters up. Then we basted the side seams down. Again, starting at the 90 degree angle, leaving our corner free. We also left the corner on the bottom free. Okay, 90 degree angle all the way to the end of the pocket. So this is now in place. Now we're gonna take our other pocket piece and we're going to clip these arm gussets out of the way. We don't want them getting caught right now. We wanna match up our pocket edge. Now I'm just gonna do this temporarily and this pocket edge. And we're gonna kind of hold it up so we can see and make sure that this edge here and this edge here are equal, which they are not at this moment. So we're gonna kind of maneuver them around till we get them equaled up. And clip the side in place. And I'm saying side, but really this is the top and bottom. Let's check the other. It's pretty close on this side. Here we go. Okay. Now we are not sewing this closed. This is going to be our turning hole. So do not sew that closed. But we are going to sew the top of the pocket and the bottom of the pocket. Let's take it to the machine. Back stitch well, 1 8 inch seam allowance. Stop right where the pocket stops, not where the extended part. And then back stitch well. Repeat for the opposite side.
Okay, we have now basted the top pocket, top of this pocket in place and the bottom of this pocket in place. And we can unclip the arm gussets. We have left this side of the pocket open as a turning hole. Now we're going to take our ribbons. We're gonna line them up along the top edge. Your pin loop will be to the left. So this is your top edge. Get a clip, line them up, clip them in place, take them to the machine and baste them on with a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Okay, so let's hold this in place. Put it under the presser foot. I like to start it right in the center. And a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Back, back stitch it and go forward. Okay, we basted this ribbons on with a 1 8 inch seam allowance to the top on the right side of the interior. Now we're going to set this aside and we're going to begin working on our zipper tape. Now we're going to begin preparing our zippers. First thing you're going to do is you're going to lay your zipper tape right side up. You're going to take your ruler and you're going to measure and mark just inside the seam allowance. We're going to take it and we're going to open the end slightly. Right where the mark is, we're going to pinch it right there. And that's going to create a 90 degree angle of your zipper. You're going to use that pinched fold and fold it over even with the angle. Did you see that? Pinch it on the mark. Pinch it on the mark and then use that fold to line up along the zipper. Then you're going to take a pen or however you want to hold it in place. And there you go. We're going to do the same thing with the other side. Pinch it right on the, on the line. Use that fold to line it up with the actual zipper teeth. And there you have it. Use a pen to hold it in place. And then take it to your machine. Now I'm going to fix that. Okay. It shifts, just fix it. No big deal. Now take it to the machine and sew it with a 1 8 inch seam allowance right here, making sure that the fold stays in place. Let's take it to the machine. Okay, we're going to baste these folds in place. I like to start just a little bit back. Maybe just go forward and backwards a few times. Okay, let's do the other side now. Now that we've basted our zipper tape to have the 90 degree angles, we can separate the entire thing and set it aside. We're gonna take our exterior, we're gonna place it wrong side up. And we're going to take and make a mark on the wrong side at the end of each arm gusset. Okay. 
Then we're going to do the same thing for our lining on the wrong side. Make your same mark. Okay, for this side where we have our turning hole, make sure you have the wrong side. Okay, let's take the exterior back out and we're going to go to the line that we drew here and we're going to add DST, double-sided tape, to the little short edge here. Then we're gonna peel it off, peel off the backing. And we're going to fold it up to that line. Stick it down real good. And then because we're not sewing this until the very end, I like to use a clip to make sure that the double-sided tape does not come off. And we're just gonna repeat it for the rest of the arms in both the exterior and the interior. Let's do the same thing to our interior. Apply the DST, double-sided tape, right to the short edges of the arms. Move the backing and fold it up to the line. Then add a clip. Okay, let's set this aside. Okay, now we need our exterior. We're gonna take our exterior right side up. We're gonna need to be right here at the top of the arm on the right side. We need the zipper tape that angles towards the left with the right side up. So you're gonna take it and you're gonna put right sides together with the angle at the top. You want it, the angle right here, the zipper tape, to line right, right up right here with the line you drew. Because you need to leave room at the top here to be able to sew together this to the other side. So, line this up. Keep it right along the edge here. And put a clip. And then we're just going to clip all the way down the zipper tape, keeping it lined up with the edge of the arm gusset. Repeat with the other side. Again, line it up right sides together where the angle is and the line. Okay. 
Okay, we're gonna sew our zipper on with a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Back stitch well. And now let's do the other side. Same thing. Now that we've sewn on the zippers, we're going to take our lining piece, we're gonna lay it right side together with the exterior. We need to go ahead and grab these ribbons and make sure that they don't get caught anywhere. So let's just go ahead and clip these up here. We're gonna line up these folds. We can go ahead and just use one clip now to hold both of these folds. And we're going to clip all the way down the edge. So let's line up this fold. There we go. And you may find that there's a little bit of play here. It's just the way that fabric stretches when you sew it. So just move it around a little till you get it all eased in. Then you just move it around. You'll get it eased into place. For this side, you're gonna to have to flip it like this. Remember, we have our turning hole here, so this arm gusset is gonna to need to come out like this. Can you see that? It just wants to lay flat like this, but we're going to need to flip it this way and clip it over here. I'm gonna move that around, I'm sure. But let's line up our folded edges. Put that together. Line up the other side. It's very important that you keep your folds straight because in the end, you will be sewing these together. But it's not until the end. This one more flat I like to clip right here and right here tug a little make sure they're firm together and you'll notice that there is it's flat they're not twisted or turned or anything like that they're totally flat right sides together now let's take this to the machine and we're gonna sew it with a quarter inch seam allowance. All right, let's sew these zippers on with a quarter inch seam allowance. Be sure that your folds stay lined up. I like to back stitch very well. Just hold on to your piece. It's gonna try to move around a little bit. Trying to shift a little, so just hold on tight.
Okay, just to the end of the fold and then back stitch well. I like to do it twice right here. Now let's do the other side. And back stitch well. Okay, next step is to turn the entire cover right side out. Real easy because both sides are still open. Okay. Now we're going to crease along the zipper tape fold and we're going to press it. If you use an iron, you'll get the best results. Another thing we're gonna do, is we're gonna take some scissors and we are going to clip just inside of these corners. It'll help us when we're top stitching later, these folds. So on your zipper tape side over here, one side is sewn with an eighth inch seam allowance, so you really can't trim this side, but you tr you can trim the opposite side. So let's go ahead and trim all of them first. Don't clip your stitching. There we go. Now, we'll start with one fold, unclip that, Flip it around and line it up. It's real important to get your folds lined up evenly now so that they stay in place later. I like to really clip it good right here on, on all four folds. The next thing we do is we take our 90 degree angles for our center portions here and we connect those with a clip. Just helps to keep everything really lined up. Again, you'll get the best results if you press this with an iron. Okay, next fold. Come around, make sure your fold is lined up very well. Ninety degree angle. Let's do the opposite arm gusset. Flip your folded edge around, line it up, and start clipping. Find your 90 degree angles. have to use all these clips. I just find it keeps me lined up way better. Last fold.
All right, we have all of our arm gussets clipped into place. The edges will be a lot better if you press them with an iron. Okay, so. When you're sewing over here on the side where we have our turning hole open, be sure not to catch this pocket, any part of it in this seam allowance here of the top stitching, which should be fairly easy to do, but just, just make sure you're pulling on it and feeling where you're sewing so that you don't catch it. Okay, let's take it to the machine. Okay, remember that this is a top stitch, so set your machine to the top stitch length. You want to back stitch well right here. This is a pretty pivotal corner or end. Be sure that you pull tight, making sure that it's lined up and straight. About here underneath is your pin loop, so make sure that that's folded and out of the way. And when you get down a little more ways, you'll feel your tag if you have one. Just off the end of the fold, back stitch probably about two times. Okay, time for the other side. This side you're gonna want to double back stitch at least. Okay, when we get to about here, we wanna make sure that we do not catch this pocket inside. So what I'm doing is I'm reaching in there and I'm folding it back out of the way and then I'm holding it down right here it's actually folded right here, and I'm holding down where I'm gonna be sewing so that it can't get back in that area. Reach inside and make sure that you keep pulling it out of the way while you're still keeping this taut. We have top stitched along both of the zippers. Now we're gonna flip it back, wrong side out. We still wanna keep our folds nice and stuck. So we're gonna go ahead and add a clip to each fold again. Portion, we need to begin by measuring our arm gusset from the 90 degree angle to the folded edge. This accounts for any difference in your seam allowance or anything for you to do this without being given a measurement. Okay, so I have my measurement. And then I'm gonna take from this 90 degree angle and I'm gonna measure and I'm gonna make a mark. Then I'm gonna take from this opposite 90 degree angle, measure over and make a mark, okay? Let's do the top the same way. Measure over make a mark 
measure over and make a mark. We're gonna flip it over to our lining side, our interior side. And we're gonna begin on this side that has the 90 degree angles. This side is a little bit different because of the turning hole. So we're gonna start here. We're gonna measure and make our mark. We're gonna do the top and we're gonna measure and we're gonna make our mark. Now what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take and we're gonna measure from our mark to the center point. Okay, once you find that, then you're gonna measure from the center point over to this side and make your mark. Okay, we're gonna start with the interior wrong side up and the bottom of it towards you. We're gonna begin with the bottom left arm gusset. We're going to take this arm gusset, we're going to open the middle of the center portion, and we're going to line up right sides together the arm gusset, the fold with the line. It should lay perfectly. It should just fold right at the stitching here, and it should just lay perfectly right along the center portion. And then clip it in place. Then for the bottom, I'm just gonna open it up. Right here, it should already be pretty much laying right in place. Your fold should line up with this. It's kind of difficult to see, but it should line up like right in place. So you can see, it's just a perfect angle here and just lined up. Okay, now we're gonna flip it around and we're gonna do the top one. And the interior, line it up, the fold with the line you drew. And, and just clip along the raw edge here. And for the exterior, it should line up with the line. And it does. Just clip it in place. Okay. For this side, we have to do something a little special for the pocket. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay the cover down wrong side up where the arm gusset is open. Now, we have a little corner here for our pocket. So what we wanna do is we wanna clip from this corner of this 90 degree angle up to the stitching line that we made. But we do not wanna cut our pocket. So just be very careful when you put your scissors in this side and snip. Don't snip too far. Only enough for the pocket corner to come out. So let's snip it here. You can always snip a little more if you need to, so don't snip too much in the beginning. If you have to snip a little more, do it. But we're gonna be wrapping this around the corner. So as you see, I need to snip just a little more but only enough for this little corner to come out. And then it's gonna get wrapped around just like that. Now, what we'll do now, we line up the pocket folded edge, pocket folded edge, line up the folded edge with the line we drew and clip it. And 
and this should be straight right here and clip it. There. Now this side is prepared and you do this the same way you did before. So this side is done. Now repeat this for the opposite side. I'm going to start with this side here. Don't catch your corner. Just barely enough for that pocket corner to come out. Fold it around it. And clip it. This folded edge should line up right with the mark and clip it. And it should be straight. All right. Now we have all of our gussets open attaching to each side. As you can see, my zipper tape sticking out here and I don't want it to get in any of my seam allowances. And I also have the ribbons. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my turning hole, reach in here, grab the ribbons, reach in here and grab the zipper tape. Put them all together and clip them to the handle because the handle is not going anywhere. And there we go. So everything is secure in the center so you won't catch any of that. And you're going to take this to the machine and sew each arm gusset individually, making sure to backstitch well at the folded edge. We're gonna open up our gusset. We're gonna begin sewing with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Backstitch well. I'm gonna move my clip that's holding my fold closed. Okay, and then we're going to back stitch well. Move to the next one. I'm also going to move this fold clip. And again, 3 8 inch seam allowance, back stitch well. We're going to go straight to where the pocket meets right here, not the end and backstitch well there. This is our turning hole, so that's why you need to backstitch so well there. I'm just gonna flip it over. We're gonna do this side. Now, you may need to reach in and make sure that nothing is going to be caught your zipper could actually turn down there. In fact, mine was right here. So make sure that you pull your zipper tape out of the way or anything that could be in there to get caught. Okay, and 3 8 inch seam allowance. Back stitch well. Move the clip from the fold. It's pretty held in place now. You don't necessarily need it now that both edges are sewn.
I'm going to reach in from the turning hole. I'm going to make sure my zipper tape is out of the way again. Those little corners so you can catch stuff. Okay. And we're going to repeat for the entire other side. Because this is a corner, I'm going to make sure my zipper tape's out of the way. Flip it over, and again, 3 8 inch seam allowance. Really good back stitching right here, but only begin and end right at the edge of the 3 8 inch. See the pocket end there. We just closed all of our arm gussets into the center portion. You start and stopped right at the fold. Now what we need to do is we need to trim. All of these little bits will be a little bit bulky in our seam allowance. So to reduce the bulk, we're going to snip at an angle all the little bitty corners. Go all the way around and just snip your corners. Be careful not to cut into your stitching. Now that we've trimmed that, I'm going to take some double-sided tape on the exterior side, and we're going to place it right along the opening in the center portion. This step is not mandatory, but it is helpful. I've been asked why the spine is longer on the bottom, and that's because the zipper tape will sandwich between the spine and the interior at the end. The more fabric you have here, the less chance of shifting where you won't catch the entire seam in your top stitch. So you have a better chance of less shifting when you have this longer seam allowance right here on the spine. The next step is to reduce the seam allowance. So we're gonna cut along each of the arm gussets all the way from the angled corner, angled edge here, all the way in and just veer it up right about here. We're gonna leave the center portion long on every single center portion. So let's trim down the seam allowance to about a quarter inch. when you get to here, you just kind of curve it up. There you go. Interior side too. thicker there where the pocket is, but it'll do. And right here where the fold is, we're going to angle it up. Okay. 
Let's turn it around, do the other side. All right, so we have trimmed all of our seam allowance. Now we're gonna open our turning hole here and we are going to flip it right side out through the turning hole. Nice big turning hole, makes it real easy. zipper tips. Now if you notice right here, because we only had a 1 8 inch seam allowance and I clipped my center notch, I didn't catch all that. Now we're going to catch that when we close up this hole. So this is what we're going to do. Turned it right side out. We see everything that we have. We're going to flip it where just the turning hole is open. Okay. Now what you can't tell is that the zipper tape is right here. So you're going to have to reach inside and be very careful, reach inside this way, and be very careful not to catch your zipper tape. But we're gonna get our corner nice and straight. And we're gonna pull down the exterior, pull it down so that it's nice and straight. You should be with the interior lining of the arm gusset and the interior lining of the arm gusset on the other side. The exterior really should be further away. Now, once we find our corners, we're going to line it up and we're gonna clip it. This right here is meant to fold over and then fold back over. But we're gonna do that after we get it all lined up. Then we're gonna come along and we're gonna sew it with an eighth inch seam allowance across the fold, cause it will be a fold then, and that will seal up our turning hole. So let's get it all clipped. Right now I'm pushing down that zipper. That corner zipper likes to come up into the seam allowance and we don't want that. I'm gonna use a longer clip so that I can see what I'm doing here. All right, something else you're gonna notice is that these corners are folded over like this. There is a reason for that. It's because this is part of the seam allowance that we didn't cut off once we were up here. Your seam should be right here on the edge, which will leave a little fold on the end, which also keeps from having any raw edges. So I'm gonna reach in from behind here and make sure to pull my zipper tape out so it doesn't get caught in my top stitching. And now that we have this all lined up, 
we're going to take it and we're going to fold this over. So I'm gonna do it a little at a time just to keep it all lined up the way it's supposed to be. And now we can use the stronger clips. Okay, we're gonna take it to the machine and we're going to sew right along this folded edge with a 1 8 inch seam allowance. All right, we want the edge of the fold to show right here on the top. So I'm gonna to put it in under our needle and we want a scant 8 inch seam allowance. Back stitch well. Once you get it started, you don't typically need to continue using hem hemostats, but just go slow. We're at the opposite corner here, and so we need to make sure that the zipper is out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and remove the clips and hold on to it. Point it back. Straight. Now that we've sewn the pocket closed, we're going to flip the pocket right side out. Now we're going to flip under each of our center portions here that is still open. I like to flip it under from seam allowance to seam allowance and just clip it. It should just fold exactly where it's supposed to. The top edge, now that we've folded them in, we can remove the DST from the center here on the top edge and we can stick these together. Line up both folds. and clip it. This is where keeping the folded edges together was important. You wanna keep that together and all even. Clip it 
and clip it. You need to maneuver it. Do all that right now. We are going to sew on the top. So once this is all ready, we're going to make sure that our ribbons are down. We don't want them to come up. So why don't we go ahead and clip them to this clip and they'll stay. So we're going to take it to the machine. We're going to sew with a 1 8 inch seam allowance right along the top edge from one end of the spine to the other end of the spine. 1 8 inch seam allowance from one end of the spine to the other end of the spine. With a 1 8 inch seam allowance, we're going to start at this outside eighth inch stitching that we did before. And this is a top stitch, so make sure it's on your top stitch length. Remember that your ribbons are under here. You can choose whether you want them to be underneath and held down or whether you want them to be out and able to move around. I've done it both ways. Now we're gonna take it and we're gonna sew with an eighth inch seam allowance on each of these arm gussets at the top. This is also a top stitch, so make sure it's on your top stitch length. Go all the way to the spine and back stitch. And we'll do the other side. Now that we've sewn the entire top closed, we're gonna work on the bottom. We're gonna start with our zipper tape. We wanna go ahead and insert our zipper pull. So let's get it put on. Sometimes zipper pulls take a little bit of patience, so we'll see how this works out. There we go. I'm gonna put a clip on the into the tape just to keep the pull from coming off. Make sure you have it right. Yep. That's all you need to know. All right. We're going to take and move the ribbon clip up to here keep all the ribbons from getting caught in the bottom. Now we're going to turn over and work from the exterior. I'm going to take this center clip and just kind of temporarily clip the exterior to the lining. I'm going to remove two of the corner clips and that leaves us with these two. What we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to line up our folds on the ends of these arm gussets and clip it. Take this one and do the same thing. And I'm going to move this around just 
just a little bit to make sure that it's not messing with the placement of my folded clips. There we go. And we're going to take this to the machine and we're going to sew with a 1 8 inch seam allowance on the arm gusset folds only. Just like we did on the top, we're only going to do this portion on the bottom. Let's take it to the machine. Make sure it didn't move. Start at this top stitching line over here. This is a top stitch, so you will want to put it on your top stitch length. And then go all the way to your spine. Back stitch a little. Let's move on to the other side. We're almost done. What we need to do now is we need to test the cover. So we need to actually close it up. And then we need to even out our interior and our exterior. So we're going to take that clip off and we're going to line it up. I'm going to put it back just for a second. And we're going to come over here. I'm going to put another one over here. And we're going to put another one right here. Now, if you put the double-sided tape on yours, you could actually use that in just a moment. What we do now is we're going to take our zipper tape and we're going to slide, take off the tab, slide it down into the space between the interior and the exterior. That's where the longer spine keeps from moving so much. And you clip it into place really well. And now we're going to unzip it. Now, the reason we did that is because you need to make sure that your zipper is all the way in or it'll have a funny little hump right here. So we're going to take it to the machine and we're going to, you got to kind of turn it inside out like that. And it's going to have like a bowl like effect. You want your zipper tab to be just, or I should say the pull to be just above the exterior spine fold. And we're gonna sew with an eighth inch seam allowance across our spine. Again, it's in a bowl shape to keep the zipper tape tucked in as far as it needs to be tucked. Last step and we're almost done. So we have a bowl shape. And we need to fit it under our presser foot here. All right. And we're going to start at the outermost stitching on the spine. This is a top stitch, so make sure you have it on your top stitch length. Let's curve it the way we need it here. All right, hope you can see that. All right, we don't want our zipper tape to move. If it does, we'll have a funny lump. So just hold it in place. Your pull will be right up against the spine and just sew along. Move your pull out of the way. 
but leave it butted up against the spine. We just completed sewing our honeycomb cover. Let's turn it right side out. Undo the ribbons. Let's test it out. We have our Bible here. We have our pen loop. Thanks for watching. We truly hope you enjoyed sewing up the honeycomb cover with us. If you like what you saw, please consider subscribing.